With all the talk of reckless money printing, hyperinflation, and debasement of currencies around the world today, it sounds reasonable to have some kind of backup plan ready to replace regular currencies should the need arise. Now, of course, there are cryptocurrencies, and they are great as alternative investment vehicles. But their high transaction fees and slow processing times makes them extremely unsuitable to replace something like the American dollar in whatever form it may take. This is all really frustrating because a nation's currency is supposed to serve the people of a nation, and it does genuinely seem like in recent years, this rule has mutated into bending the economy to the whim of policymakers who may not always have the best ideas. If only you had access to the control panel, you could stop all this reckless money printing that, according to some top economists and financiers, is driving us towards hyperinflation Armageddon. This begs the question, how could you create your own currency? And how could an obscure old video game give us an answer to this question? So, it's time to literally learn how money works as we look into the steps an individual or group could take to create a currency with the same functionality and recognition as those created by governments around the world. So, to get started, we need to properly understand what a currency must do to be a viable replacement for, let's say, the US dollar. For starters, it must be easy to use and widely accepted. So you need to make sure almost everybody within a desired region or as part of a desired community is willing to accept this in exchange for things they have to offer, be that goods, services, or their labor to an employer. It must also be easy to use. You want people to be able to exchange this currency quickly and easily with one another by handing over some kind of designation of this currency or by setting up software to handle these transfers, which is obviously the more modern solution. It must also remain fairly stable in pricing. The value of a currency appreciating thousands of percent within a given year might be heralded as a victory in the crypto communities. But for real currencies, this is what we call hyperdeflation, which is a real thing and in many ways way, way worse than hyperinflation. A stake dinner should cost approximately the same number of units of your currency one year to the next. Minor variations are fine, but anything more than 10% either way per year and you don't have a currency. You have a vehicle for rampant speculation. Finally, as an added bonus, it should be fairly cheap to use. This has a little asterisk next to it because technically this is just part of being easy to use, but it is easier to think of it as its own little category. Your currency should be cheap to store, transport, and transfer. That means you should probably avoid things like heavy metals, which have historically been popular but are not great on the cheapness front. To this point, you will also want to make sure your currency can be digitized, because if you want to be compatible with all the other legit currencies in the world, then this is how the vast majority of trade back and forth between these currencies is made. Now, if you are still thinking, oh, oh, a cryptocurrency can do all these things, you might not be wrong, but there are certainly better options. Almost all cryptocurrencies work on a blockchain, which is just a technical way of saying a public record shared between everybody in the network. This is great for making the system decentralized, but it also tends to make it very cumbersome because you are basically processing transactions via committee. There are people that can explain the computer science -y stuff behind this much better than me, but basically cryptocurrencies get pretty mediocre scores across the board in all these categories. And yes, yes, I know. Before the enthusiasts blow up the comment section, there are plenty of different coin designs that shift around these stats a bit, but ultimately they still do away with the thing that inspired this whole process in the first place, control. Decentralization is great in theory, but if you are going through all the effort to float your own currency, you want to be the one with your finger on the money printer button. So, a more traditional system is probably better here. Fortunately, this is also far easier to create. You could print out paper rectangles, but even easier is still just digits on a computer. So here's how you would actually go about doing that. First, you want to create a secure database that is able to record and adjust who owns how much money. This will effectively be a glorified Excel spreadsheet. And you might be surprised to learn that most modern banks keep records of bank balances this way. Now, you can add utilities to this database system, like the ability for people to easily update their own accounts by sending or receiving money, and of course you will need a secure way to host this database. All of this is fairly easy to pull off with modern database software and web hosting services like AWS or Microsoft Azure. Even someone with the most basic understanding of database systems could pull this off no problem at all. The difficulty is in actually getting people to care about these digits. 
If I offered to move a billion how many works dollars into your account in exchange for your house, you would be pretty stupid to take that deal because basically nobody else would be willing to exchange those dollars for anything else. But consider this. Let's say you will set up a system and create a two-way exchange where you'll convert one American dollar for one how many works dollar and one how many works dollar back for an American dollar. Suddenly, this means that your digits in the database do have value, because if someone has some in their designated account, then they can just transfer them for American dollars. Now, if I offered you a billion how many works dollars for your house, you would be more than happy to take that deal, because you could just transfer this money into American dollars. This is of course assuming that you are confident that the exchange could honor this transaction. So at this point, the value of your currency is determined by what you say it's exchangeable for and the confidence people have in your ability to honor this exchange. For an individual, that confidence might be a hard thing to build, but for a large well-known institution, it shouldn't be too difficult at all. In fact, what I have described here in this system is basically a casino. In a casino, individuals will willingly trade in real-world dollars for plastic chips, confident in the fact that they can later be traded back for an equal amount of real-world dollars. In fact, patrons of casinos can be very confident of this exchangeability, because casinos are legally required to keep enough cash on hand to pay out all the chips that they have in circulation. But the thing is, these poker chips are not really a currency. You see, there is nothing that a market participant can purchase with these chips apart from entries in games of chance, their value is not propped up by their exchangeability for another currency, their value relies exclusively on the exchangeability with another currency. In fact, one of the best examples of a currency that was not made by a regular government is PED from the video game Entropia Universe, a video game that uses a currency that is also exchangeable for real world dollars. Just like our hypothetical how many works dollars or casino chips, this currency is exchangeable back and forth for a fixed rate. The game developers will exchange one American dollar for 10 PED, and likewise they will also exchange 10 PED for one American dollar. Now for this reason, this video game has often been compared to a casino, where engaging in the activities of the game are basically like playing hands of blackjack. Now this isn't entirely unfair, but there is one big difference, especially as it relates to the currency. While casino chips basically have no value outside the money they can be exchanged for, PED does actually have some value as a standalone unit of exchange. For example, if you wanted to buy a house in Germany, you would need to pay for that house in euros. If you want to buy land in this video game, you will need to pay for it in PED. Both of these currencies have value not because they can be exchanged for other currencies, but because they can be used to buy goods within their own markets. For what it's worth, some real estate investments within this game have actually generated higher returns than real estate investments within Germany, so make of that what you will. So for all intents and purposes, Mindark, the developer of this video game, have effectively created their own currency. So if you wanted to make your own currency, just follow their steps. Create the technical infrastructure to facilitate electronic funds transfers, basically that glorified Excel spreadsheet we made earlier. Establish an exchange with the reputation to always be able to exchange this new currency back and forth for another currency. And then create a market where your new currency is the only one accepted to purchase things people really do value. Now, the last problem you will face is that your new currency is still ultimately pegged to some other currency because of this exchange. No matter what happens, nobody is going to trade in their American dollars for less than one how many works dollar. And nobody is going to exchange their how many works dollar for less than one American dollar, because why would they? If either side got a worse offer, they would just go to the exchange and get this one for one deal. This means that after all this effort, your currency will still suffer some kind of hyperinflation that people are fearing the US dollar will. The solution to this is to slowly but surely widen the spread that you offer at this exchange. Start off with one to one, but over time work to a system where you'll offer only 50 how many work cents for every one American dollar, and likewise will only offer 50 US cents for every how many works dollar. At this point, people might go, this exchange rate sucks. I'm gonna go deal with other people who wanna exchange this currency and get a better price closer to the middle. This is how you float a currency and make its foreign exchange value purely determined by market forces. This means that if the value of the US dollar really does tank overnight, your new currency will be immune to that impact, just so long as people still see value in the market that your currency facilitates. Now, maintaining the value of the currency will be the big challenge at this point. Normally, governments do this by mandating that taxes get paid in their currency under threat of imprisonment, which as far as motivation goes, is pretty good. 
but it's not necessary. Freedom is just another product, albeit a very valuable one. So as long as people see that they can access other things of value easily using your currency, it will have value. One institution that could genuinely make this crazy thought experiment a reality is Amazon. Just imagine that the only way to purchase goods off the largest online marketplace in the world was using free floating Bezos bucks that were slowly introduced using this method. It would genuinely be a currency that could compete with the big global players, especially when backed by the technical infrastructure that Amazon has at its disposal to make that a reality. Now, will it happen? Well, there was the Libra proposal, which is at least 50% of the way there, so maybe we shouldn't be giving the real life stonks man any ideas. But realistically, there are already talks of breaking up Amazon's operations within the US, so giving the middle finger to Uncle Sam by creating competition to his currency is not exactly a very tactful business decision, as powerful as it may be. Now, if you want to learn more about undermining economic powers of sovereign nations, go and watch our video on the World Bank and the International Monetary Fund to find out what they do and if they are really the all-powerful evil empires people say they are. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing to keep on learning how money works.